Now let's continue to understand the Trinity, the true Trinity, as we've mentioned and we'll mention again and again because there's many types of Trinity. There's solid, liquid, and gas. There's man, woman, and child. There's up, down, and center. You know, there's there's, there's many different kinds of Trinity as a as a as a prerequisite for you all. Like we said before, we're here to to bring and and place from the core the basic information, and it is um, upon each one to take personal responsibility, especially in discipleship, to look, search, and study, as the Bible even teaches teaches as well to study and to show thyself approved to God. This is what's very important. But what we're going to present here is some of the basic some of the basic information, the basic core information, Second Timothy two and fifteen, which says, Study to show thyself approved to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So if we as Rastafari, if we lament as we should lament the fact that um, much of Jah work is still undone, especially by us, it is because we lack the study, that we have not studied and become proficient in what we should become proficient and therefore be efficient to the works of the King of Kings and his Christ. So the responsibility is upon us. You can be one of the Rasta-ish people who continue to Babylon about Babylon, or you can really do something about it. You understand? And what is necessary for us to do about it is to learn the truth. Is to learn the truth, as as a, as a, as the word basically says in um, Romans. Let's look at Romans for a moment. Romans, and I've gone here before because there's some areas that help to summarize the overview and to to help us to see matters into its proper context, Romans chapter 12, where it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, or Jah, if you please, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. We call Burhana Salasi, a.k.a. Bob Marley, who's, who sung about I and I as a living sacrifice, to present our bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God which is your reasonable service. We as Rastafari always speak about reasoning. This is So what's our reasoning, reasonable service? Reason on that. Verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world. This is, this is where the, the backsliding and the apostasy has happened even amongst us as Rastafari, that many are trying to be conformed to this world, to be even friends of this world. And Scripture clearly says that if you try to be a, a friend of the world, you are in enmity. You are an enemy of God. So to try to be a friend of the world, the world has crucified our Godfather and King of Kings, the Father and the Son. So be not conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed transformed by the renewing of your mind. We're living in the time where transformation is wanna wanna. It's, 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 it's the main thing. That's the main thing. People say, well, what's happening? What's going on? Is the comet coming? The biru is the end of the world? What are we to do? Where are we to go? You are to enter into the holy place and be Transform, but first of all, you have to know where is the holy place, and this all begins by study. This all begins by study and acquisition of the knowledge of the Son of God, of the knowledge of the Son of God. One more scripture, but let's get through this scripture, and we'll add the next scripture. So here we're still in Romans, Romans chapter twelve, verse two, where it says, "Be not conformed to this world, to this seclorum." to a seclorum, the secular world. You want to know what the secular world is? Take out the dollar bill and study it carefully. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, that you may do what? Prove it. Not believe it, not guess about it, not assume about it, but may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect 
will of God. Now, our God Father, Kenamawi Hala Selassie, he teaches us to make our wills obedient to good influences and to avoid evil is to show the greatest chokmah, is to show the greatest tibet, is to show the greatest wisdom, or as Rasta-ish people will say, wisma, to show the greatest wisma. Now, let's turn our Bibles to Ephesians. As we say, grab your pen and your paper and your sacred scripture and bring a, a, a willing mind ready to receive the half of the story not told since our ancestors were sold into slavery in 1530 A.D. Now, Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, the whole chapter is is, is worthy of, of, of study and, 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 and meditation. But we're going to begin with verse 12, where it speaks about the purpose of ministry gifts. The purpose, what is the purpose of ministry gifts? And here it says in chapter 4 of Ephesians, verse 12, for the perfect, for, for, for the perfecting, excuse me, for the perfecting of the saints. The word saints mean kedusan. When you say, I'm a Rasta, because Nazarite vow, Numbers chapter 6, right? That's what a lot of folks say, right? I'm grow, I grow my locks, and I'm a Nazarite, because locks is in chapter 6 of Numbers, the Old Testament, so I'm a Nazarite. Okay, but did you read that right? You're a Nazarite, but did you read it right? Did you really read it right? Did you study it? Or you just got that so you can tell your Christian, you know, family and friends the reason why you are not combing your hair and, you, and you're growing your locks? You know, and, and what is your real, what was really your mind? Was your mind to conform with the world? You see some stars and celebrities out there, or were you transformed? You know what I'm saying? By renewing your mind. Here in Numbers chapter 6, remember it says, we have to rightly divide the words, what it means. So still put a put a pen in it or, or a bookmark in Ephesians chapter 4, and then go to Old Testament chapter 6 of Numbers. And here we're speaking about the order of the Sarawit, or the order of the Tabaot, the host, and speaking about the Nazarites. And it says, And the Lord, and Yahweh, yod Hey wow Hey baruch Hu, blessed be He, spake to Moses, Musa, Mashu, saying, Speak to the children of Israel. So this was given to a specific people, first and foremostly, of a specific people. Yes, Gentiles can grow locks, but they're not really Nazarites in that sense. You, you must understand this. It's like I said, speak to the Americans. This doesn't mean that the Australians, the message is not for the Australians, it's for the Americans. They might be related, they might have some relationship, but the message is to whom the message is to. So this is why we have to know who we are as the so-called um, Negroes, Blacks, Coloreds, N-words here in the uh, Americas and the Caribbean, and who our ancestors were as well. Then we'll know that the so-called Negro, the so-called N-word, nigger, is really the Hebrew, whom is, whom is called the Israelites, speak of the lost sheep, speak to the children of Israel and say to them when either man or woman, perfect equality, you, you, sisters, you don't even know white female, um, Jezebel feminist movement to be equal in God's in God's eyes. Here in Numbers chapter six, it says a man or a woman, right? When either man or woman. Other areas it does say that male, the males of Israel. That's that, that that's where we got to man up, brothers, because it speaks specifically to the males. But here it's saying when either man or woman shall separate themselves, do what? Separate themselves. Separate themselves from what? Well, let's read on. To vow a vow of a Nazarite to separate themselves to yod Hey wow Hey or anglicize the Lord. Now, there's a, there's a footnote here in our Schofield uh, Study Reference Bible next to um, Nazarite, and, and it's, and it's uh, subscribed subscription 2, and it says the Nazarite more accurately um, Nazarite, instead of Nazarite, Nazarite, one separated was a person of either sex, separated wholly to the Lord, to Yahweh. Then it says abstention from wine, which was the symbol of mere natural joy, Psalm CIV or Psalm 104.15, was the expression of, the, of a devotedness which found 
all its joy in Yahweh. Found all of its joy in Yahweh. The long here, naturally a reproach to man, was at once the visible sign of the Nazarite's uh, separation. Now, it says it was a reproach to man, a reproach to secular man. That's what it meant. Some some verses say, oh, I don't believe that, because you really don't know it. You haven't studied and shown you proof. What the word says is true, but the context of it you don't know. The real context where it's a reproach is the reproach to secular Gentile man was at once the visible sign of the Nazarite separation of his willingness to bear reproach, to bear the reproach for Yahweh's, for Jehovah's sake. The type found is perfect fulfillment in Yeshua. The perfect fulfillment now is found in Yeshua, Yehoshua, in, in Jesus Christos, who was, quote, holy, harmless, undefiled and separate from from sinners, Hebrews VII or 7 and 26, who was utterly separated to the Father. He was completely separated to the Father, to his Father, our Father, his God, our God, John 1 and 18 and 6 and 38, who allowed, he allowed no mere natural claim, no natural claim, those in the natural world who are not spiritual, to make claims on you, to hinder or divert him. Matthew 12, verse 46 to 50 is very good right there where he asks, so who is my, who is my, my, my brother and who is my mother and, and who is my sister? And who, for the sake of his unique work, denied himself the innocent natural joy of of wife, of child, and home. Of wife, of child, and home. Now, this was this is what Christ, Yeshua, Yehoshua did, and this is also the example of the first century Christians. What their example, following in that wake, was to do the same thing. Now, this is difficult for most folks, and um, when people don't recognize that and say, "Well, I'm a Nazarite," so forth and so on. You have to see, well, who are they really separated to? Are they separated to the world, the seclura, to worldly claims and natural claims, or are they separated to godly claims? That's what proves their Nazariteship more than whether they drink some wine or some other kind of, that, that's what was, it's even the wine has a meaning to it, if you will study and show yourself approved. But let's, let's go back to verse 2 now. It says, to separate themselves to Yahweh, and it says in verse 3, he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink, and shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink, neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat moist grapes or dried. Verse 4, all the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree from the kernels even to the husk. Verse 5, all the days of the vow of his separation, there shall come, there shall no razor come upon his head until the days be fulfilled in which he separateth himself to yod hey wow hey to Yahweh the Lord, if you please. He shall be what? Kedus. In verse 5 is our main point. He shall be what? Kedus. So it's showing that separate has to do with separate to the Lord, separate to Yahweh, to Jah, if you please, has to do with Kedisana, has to do with holiness. And shall let the locks, allow the locks of the hair of his head to grow. Now, many people get caught up on the conditions, the Old Testament conditions that are laid out here without, in a natural way, without understanding the spiritual significance. Next point, there's a difference between Nazarite and Nazarene. Let's understand that that sect of the Nazarenes, you know what I'm saying, were in the image of Christ. So Christ now sets, sets the template in the Spirit of God for us. And we're going to go into more details about that. But let us return to Ephesians. Let's rightly divide this word. Now, we went there to explain basically what saints mean. Saints in the Amharic, in the Ethiopic, and similar even in the Hebraic, we say Kedusan. You understand? Or Kodeshim, Kodeshim. But Kedusan. The Kedusan means more than one Kedus. A Kedus is a singular Kedus. Like Abba Kedus. 
our God Father, for the perfecting of the Kedusan, the Holy One, for the work of the ministry, when Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12, for the edifying of the body of Christ, for the edifying, the building up of the body of Christ. You know what we're going to do right here? Let's, let's see if we can bring this up. Let's see if we can bring this up. And so we can show you some of this right here, and we can also compare with the, you know, we can compare with the Amharic as well, with the purified language. So we're in chapter 4. We're at, this is exactly where we're at right here, um, where it says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying, for the edifying, let's see if we can zoom this in, you know, we can zoom this in a little bit, for the Edifying, mm, here we go, let's zoom this forward, see how, see how much we can zoom in on this, how large we can make this, okay, verse 12, okay, here we go, for the edifying of the body, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity, the unity of faith, until we do what? All come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge, the knowledge of the Son of God to a what? A perfect man. It's the perfection of what man was meant to be in the image and after the likeness of the triune God to the measure of the stature, the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now, Bamarinya says, then it says here, san. That's that word right there. Kedu san. Agela Gelotin le Mesratina le Christos Akala Hint a Fituman Yehonu Zen. I remember we touched on the word before in the chart when we talk about the this chart right here. Let's pull this up. This is our study chart right here, utilizing the example of the Trinity. Um it says uh Ye Mitmanin Amen Fasawi Hiwet Manet. I remember the word manet and the hinta. Hinta means the, the, like a building, like a, a building to build a building, and manet means to build. So the second step right here, the first step is repentance. Ha, so wochina wode egziabi herremameles. Then secondly, le, ye mitmenanin na menfasawi ahiwet manet which is the building up of the spiritual life of the faithful. So the first is Sewo Chin, not Mitmanan, but Sewo Chin, people. People returning to source, returning to Yahweh, returning to Egeziyahir, the sustainer. Sewo Chin, the word Egeziyahir, Memeles. And then secondly, Le, Ye Mitmanan, Menfasawi, Hiwet, Manet, or the building up. Now that same word for Building up, and let's bring up the IOTA, the IOTA, the IOTA software, the IOTA software. And here we have, right here, it says, Le Christos Akal, for the body or the Akal, the hypostasis of Christ, hinta, the building of the hypostasis of Christ, Fitzuman, perfection, or perfect, the Yohonu Zen, so that they be perfect. So they be perfect. So, when we understand this right here, we'll see how important the knowledge of the Son of God. So this is laying out an order for the perfecting of the saints. Now, the contextualization of this actually is in the verse before. The verse before where it says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers, which it shows that each one of us has a certain calling. We have different gifts, different ministry gifts. But all of our gifts, especially as elect Arastafari, must be used for one central point and for one central idea, and that's the perfecting, 
the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying. You see, that's, that's that verse right there, for the edifying, for the edifying, for the building up. So the word edifying, I think we said exhort before, our bad. It will be edifying, for the edifying. So when you say edification, you hear people say, hey, this, this is for your edification. Well, what does edification mean? It's like education, but even greater, it's for your building up, for the building up of the body of Christ, not the physical body of the man Jesus, but the physical body of Christos, the corporate body of le Christos akala hinta, fituman yohonu zen, till we all come in the what? The unity the unity of the faith. So one has to be edified. So, see, unity is not something we can say, why don't we just all unite? So you hear a lot of folks say, why don't we just all unite? We all need to get together. We just all need to unite. Put away everything. Forget all, forget all the things we disagree on. Just let's all unite. That's impossibility thinking. It's impossible because it's not based on any spiritual principle or, or any, any law. It's not based on, it's lawless, actually. One has, has, has to be, first of all, perfecting not just of anybody, but of those who have already set themselves aside. That's what we pointed out, the Nazarene-Nazarite connection right there. For the work of ministry, as the line and Judah ministry, and many of you all out there in your own ministries, wherever you are, you are at, we're still part of the corporate body or the Akala Christos or Christos Akal, yeah, Christos Akal which is the body of Christ, the corporate body of Christ. You see, before Babylon started to make their corporations persons, see, this is another area where the devil steals from God and doesn't give God any credit, that now corporations are recognized as a person, although the corporation is not really literally a person, but it functions legally as a person. That law that they make mischief out of actually comes from God's law, it actually comes from the church. But if you look at most churches, most churches are so divided amongst each other. Well, no, I don't go to that kind of church. I'm about to do this kind of church. And that's why the world is the way it is. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. This is why there's no unity of the faith. But Christians are more divided than, than the Buddhists and than the Hindus. So-called Christians are more divided than the, than the Mohammedans or the Muslims. Christians are more divided than the Jews, than, 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 than the atheists, than any other group out there. Why is this? Because the Antichrist, they worship the false image. They don't know what they worship because salvation is of the line of the tribe of Judah, and they refuse to accept the truth of his imperial majesty. Therefore, there's no unity of the faith for them. But for us as a true body, the true corporate body of Christos, the Akala Christos, we must come in this unity of the faith and and, as it says, and of the knowledge, the key word here is the knowledge of the what son of God, the Bain Ha Elohim, to a perfect man, to a complete man, to the measure of the stature, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christos, the fullness of Christos. But there's more. Let's go to the next the next, uh, this is verse 12 and 13. Let's go to verse uh, 14 right here. Now, this is a key right here as well. This is very much a key. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. It says, In the Sihitet Shingala Bale Tenkol Besowo Chema Matalela Mikniyat. That we henceforth be no more children, no more children, immature in other words, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in the way to deceive. Now, when I look at a lot of the Rasta-ish people today, I know a lot of them mean well, and probably their original inspiration to come to the King of Kings, you know, and to, and to call themselves Rasta to begin with probably was based on 
the truth, but they didn't, they didn't go far enough. They were, like it says here, it says they were tossed to and fro. They were carried about with every wind of doctrine, every wind of teaching, all kind of crazy stuff, all this so-called new age, so-called pseudo-philosophy that, that in their unstudied minds, it seems like it's a Rasta-ish idea, but it's not. It's deception. It's, it's the continual work of the Antichrist and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive, to deceive who? To deceive the children of the King of Kings and his Christ. But see, the reason why we must study and show ourselves approved and become perfect as the Kedusa and the true Rastafari and work the ministry and edify and build up the body of Christ is so that we will come into what? The unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, Yeshua HaMoshiach, to a perfect man, to Kedamawi Halasalasi, and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, the fullness of the anointed. And notice right here, there's a colon here. It says that what? That we henceforth be no more children. That we, we are born when we're born again. You see, when we're born again, and let's bring up that chart again right here. When we are born again, you see, when we're born again, that's part of the return. The return to God, returning to God is the born again and the baptism process. Not the physical baptism, not the physical born again. You remember Nicodemus? Nicodemus said, can I go into my mother's womb after I'm already big and born? Can I go into my mother's womb again? And what did Yeshua say? Yeshua says, are you a master of Israel and you know it's not these things? I mean, are you a master among Israel? It's like the preachers and the pastors don't even know this truth. Don't even know of Hala Selassie. What they know is false and, and, and wrong. But they're masters. So if the masters, those with the master's degree, lack this basic knowledge, then what about those whom they teach or they preach to? What will they know? They, they, they are basically no better off. But this first step, the high step right here, the high step or the first step, the first of the king step, these are the king steps. Discipleship, the king steps. So Chin people must return to God. And and God is what Christ tells us when he spoke to the woman at the well. He said that God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God is a spirit. So if they are returning to God, what must they return to? They must return to God, the spirit, and the truth. And how do we know that spirit and that truth? Through the word. And how do we know the word? So there's many translations by studying, studying and showing ourselves approved, studying and meditating on that word and fellowshipping with other brothers and sisters who seek to do the will of our Father, to do the will of our Father. That's what Christ said. He said, he said, who is my brother? Who is my brother? Who is, who is my mother? Who is my sister? Those who seek to do the will of my father of God, who seeks the will of my father. What did his majesty, our God Father, say to us to make our wills obedient to good influences and to avoid evil, to show the greatest wisdom, but in order to follow this aim, one must be guided by hymenot, one must be guided by living faith, or what they call in the West among the Gentiles, religion. But our word for hymenot, or living faith, which is that word that's mistranslated as religion. So see, so we have to come out of Babylon, come out of the confusion of language, and then return to the pure language. Now, so Ochin would exiari here The first step is repentance. The second step right here, le ye mitmenanin menfasawi hiwet manets, the building up of the spiritual of the spiritual life of the mitmenat, of those who admit, of those who admit. And do we have any example of those who admit in the Old Testament it was the Shema? Remember the Shema? Shema Yisroel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ahad. You know, when we raise our, our, our hand, you understand, like to raise the one finger, to raise our one finger and to say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. But the Ethiopian eunuch, the Ethiopian eunuch, in Acts of the Apostle, no doubt you recall reading in Acts of the Apostle of how the Ethiopian was, the Ethiopian eunuch was the first Ethiopian on record, right? 
on record. So when we go to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, there's a very interesting verse. Now, I want you to look this up for yourself. Please look this up for yourself. That when we get to the verse where the Ethiopian eunuch says what each one of us, once we are admitting before the brothers and the sisters are to say, this particular verse, very interestingly enough, this particular verse they take out or they compromise in most Bibles. And the verse is Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verse 37. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verse 37. So let's, let's, um, let us go there right, right now. Let us go there right now. Acts of the Apostles, let's see, Acts of the Apostles, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8. Verse 37, let's go to verse 37, and it says, And Philip said, Philip Osim, if thou believest or admits my men, amen, if thou admits as truth, admits the truth with all thine heart, thou mayest, with all thy heart, with all thy mind, thou mayest discipline of the mind and he or discipleship of the mind and he answered and the Ethiopian eunuch answered and said I believe I admit that Yeshua HaMoshiach Jesus Christos is the son of God now I don't know if I can show you this whether at, at this angle maybe I have to Show show it to you in another in another context. Let's see if we can pull this up. Um, Cause we're using this presentation uh, form right there. Let's see. Can you can you see this right here? Yeah, you can see this right here. This is this is the Hebrew. This is the Hebrew right here, beginning beginning right here. Now on the other side is the English translation. As you can see this for yourself, you see and says and Philip said. If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus uh, Christ is the Son of God. This, this, is the, this is why the Ethiopian eunuch is utilized as, as an example of, of faith. Now, the Hebrew right here, he says, Ani, Ani, Ma'amin, Ki, Yeshua, Ha Moshiach Bain Ha Elohim Hu. So he says, Ani Amin Ki Yeshua Ha Moshiach Bain Ha Elohim Hu. Now coupled with the Shema, that is being witness. That is that is kind of going on the record. You see, when you raise. When you raise your, 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 your left hand and the finger of your left hand and holding your right hand the scripture, and you say, Ani, Ma'amin, Ki, Yeshua, Ha, Moshiach, Bain, Ha, Elohim, Hu, or I admit, saying, I admit that Yeshua, Ha, Moshiach, is the Son of God. Now, here, Bamarinya, in the Amharic, it says, Philippe O Sim Befitsum Libihi Bitamin Tefek Doal Alo Melisom, and he answered, Jesus Christos, Ye Egiziavi her religion, the Hone Amnalo, Amnalo, Me Amin, Me Amin, Ki Yeshua, Ha Moshe, Jesus Christos, Egiziavi her religion, the Hone Amnalo. That's the key word. Now, if you look into some of these Bibles, some of these Bibles actually take that, take that verse out. They put a lot of question as to whether that verse is really a true verse. Can you, can you imagine that? None, none of the other verses there, but that particular, that particular verse where the Ethiopian eunuch, who was an Ethiopian Hebrew, the reason why the Ethiopian eunuch was even there where he was was because it was the high holy day season you see it was the high holy day season and during the high holy day season it was for the pilgrim what we know as the pilgrim the pilgrim festivals and during these pilgrim festivals one would 
one would go to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, and participate in that holy day or that particular holiday. We want to just give you a little visual of the Ethiopian eunuch. Let's see if we can give you a little visual of the e now. Even the subject matter of of, of eunuch is um, very very interesting. What what is a eunuch? There's a lot of speculation about about eunuch. Some say that a, a eunuch. Uh, could be someone who has male and female sexual organs, or one who's castrated, or one who's uh, uh, somehow feminine, or somehow, you know. And so the whole issue about eunuch, we will table that motion to get into eunuch a little more in a little more detail. Otherwise, what we're going to pull up right here is the Ethiopian eunuch. It's clear that the Ethiopian eunuch was a Hebrew, and, and he, his occupation was as treasurer for a queen of the Ethiopians known as Hindike or Kentike or Candace, as one would say, of of the queen uh the queen uh Candace. So here we go right here. Let's pull this up. So here we have the Ethiopian the, the, these two scenes of the Ethiopian um eunuch. Let's see if we can pull this up. Right here. Bring this one up. Okay, this is the Ethiopian eunuch, uh Artist rendition of the Ethiopian eunuch and Philippos, that section of scripture that we just touched on right there, and and here we have Philippos um, baptizing the Ethiopian eunuch, and this is said to be the Ethiopian eunuch right here, the scene that we have in Acts of the Apostles, chapter eight. But the key about this, there, there's several keys in this. But the real key about this is what the Ethiopian eunuch said. And you can see here with the raising of the hand, and he's pointing out the scripture. They're studying the scripture, studying and showing themselves a proof. So here, it, this is a basic discipleship. But now the Ethiopian eunuch had something. And what did the Ethiopian eunuch had? That he was a Hebrew. He was part, most likely, of that upper room congregation, or he had heard about the events that occurred in the upper room where the Holy Spirit uh, and cloven tongues of fire came down on the heads of those who were assembled and they all began to speak in each other's in each other's language. They began to speak one to another in each other's language. So no doubt um, the Ethiopian eunuch or John Derreba, he heard about this. And when Philip had caught up and attached himself to uh, the eunuch's uh, chariot, as we see um, portrayed right here. When he had attached himself to the eunuch's um, chariot, he overheard him reading the prophet Isaiah. Now, my question to those who would dispute that the, that the Ethiopians at this time were Hebraic, um, what other languages was uh, the prophet Isaiah written in? especially since he was coming from Jerusalem, what other languages could he have been reading other than Hebrew? Was he reading an Amharic? And if he was reading Amharic, that just proves our point even further there. So here is the Ethiopian eunuch being an artist rendition of the Ethiopian eunuch being baptized by the apostle, by the apostle, uh, Philippos or the Apostle uh, Philip. Now that key, that key Hebraic part that we showed you before right here is something that needs to be learned and understood. Ani, Amin ki Yeshua ha Moshiach bein ha Elohim hu. Or I admit or I believe, I accept as truth that Jesus Christos is the Son of God, the Bain Ha Elohim, or Bamarinya, Jesus Christos. Ye Egziavihir Lich in the Hone Amnalo. Now the root Amnalo is the same as Amin. It's from the Mamen, Mamen root, which means to believe, admit, but more in the sense of accept as true. In English, it's translated often as Belaive. But the real connection is Revelation 3.14, where Yeshua says that I am the Amen. And in ancient Egypt, we know that the Amen is often called 
and known as the hidden, the hidden, um, the hidden one, the hidden God. And it's interesting because in the prophets, Yahweh is described as the God who hideth, who hideth himself, that he hideth himself. And then we find in Hosea, which is uh, a, a pro prophecy, we think, uh, concerning Ethiopia, that when the people turned away from true faith and, and worship, that God says, I will hide my face. And we have that prophetic picture of his majesty also hiding his face. So we have this link with the Amen and this link with true faith there. Now let's return to this. Let's return to this chart right here because we have to explain some of that, some of those basics and some of that background right there. So the first step is repentance, memelis. For your notes, the modern Jews will call it aliyah, but the way they look at it is just in the physical level, just going to the state of Israel. But what we must understand is the metaphysical implications like they say you have to you have to die and resurrect before physical death if you have that life in that sense of eternal life and not be subject to death but some of that's a little bit complicated without first studying the basics so let's get back to the basics here we have the second step but then in this diagram right here the trinity diagram you have this this gap right here as we explained this before and if you're just watching this part of it we may have to explain this again, so let's um let's let, let's draw out of this. Let's uh, zoom out for a moment, so we can get the bottom down here as well. So you can see it's one, two, it's one, two, three, four. It's ha, it's, it's ha le ha me, ha le ha me, and, and the four steps are the hoi, uh, lawe, halt, and my or mout. Some say. And you have the first step is people must return or people returning, repenting to God is the first step. But between that first step and the building up, there's this gap. Most people don't bridge the gap. That's what happens to most people. Most people will accept the good news, will accept Yeshua, so forth and so on, but never get built up. You understand? They never get built up for the spiritual life. We like to say it in Rastafari in this revelation time for the metaphysical, for the metaphysics or the esoteric. They are stuck on the exoteric. Like Christ even himself said, he said, if you can't understand earthly things, then how can you understand heavenly things? They, they're stuck on the earthly, the natural things, and are not unable, therefore, you understand, like you can only hold um, such and such things in your hand. If your hand is already filled up with stuff in order to hold something else, you have to empty out your hand. They're unwilling to empty out the, the, the physical in their spiritual hands, in other words. And this is why they cannot receive the spiritual. They get stuck in this gap right here. This gap right here. If you notice, this gap right here. I saw this gap before. They, they don't define it in this particular chart right here from this particular book about discipleship, this Ethiopian book about discipleship. But as I studied on it, I said, maybe something's incorrect here. Maybe they shouldn't have this gap here. But the Holy Spirit showed me there's a gap between the first and the second step because the devil's, the devil's trying to keep one from bridging that gap right there to build up on a spiritual life can't afford for one to build up on a spiritual life, so keep them stuck and say, yes, I returned to God, I repented, so I'm, 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 I'm hoping and, and grace saved me and a whole bunch of other rhetoric, but they haven't really built up their spiritual life, therefore they're not showing those fruits, or as the Bible says, those spiritual gifts, therefore they cannot be effective in the ministry as each and every Christian, each and every Christian and especially for us as Rastafari, have a role in this ministry. And we may not have the same, the same duties or responsibilities or the same gifts, but we don't have the same calling. But each of us is supposed to serve some um, um, productive and progressive role in the kingdom. Now, after this, once one is able to bridge this gap, hopefully, and don't, and don't get stuck in this gap right here and go from the first to the second level, from repentance to building up of the spiritual life, then they come to the third level of the, the halt or the, the C. Let's call it A, B, C, D. They come to the C level right here, and the C level says, yeah, mit 
the faithful ones. Let men say we are gelgelot for a spiritual service. Ma zegajetna ma salef. It says ma salef here, but I think it should, is, a, is a typo. Ma 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 salef for the preparation, right? The preparation, right? And ma salef, ma salef. How you? How you? Also, um, self. Self is the spiritual warfare, right? And how you? It can mean how you pass on my salaf or my or my salaf. If it's my salaf, if that's correct, my salaf right there, then it's also speaking about how we are in order and also war. It's speaking about the spiritual warfare. This word my salaf, the preparation, because there is a spiritual, there is a spiritual warfare. You understand? Because at, at such a level, if one reaches to uh, bridges this gap, they're still under enemy fire. The enemy is still trying desperately through the, all kind of claims. You understand? And the, the claims is on your spirit. The claims is on your soul. The claims is on your body by the devil and the devil's agents. Now, when you come to the fourth level, now you see one here, two here, Three here, in order now to get to the heart or the center of the matter, you understand, to, to come within, the third level is the, is the mouth or the my. It says, Hiyao egizi aviharin, the living, the living Yah, the living sustainer, the living God, baunetina bemenfes mamlek, to worship the living God in truth and in spirit or in spirit. I, we would say the men fessing uh, because that's how Christ said it. Because order, we find that order is very important here. It has illness first. You understand? Um, we must worship Him in spirit and in truth. But the spirit we must proceed because if one does not return to God in spirit, one will not be able to access the fullness, the tripartiteness of that particular truth because man was made in the image and after the likeness of God in the very beginning and we learn that the trinity or the triune of God is manifested in the human being in our spirit in our soul which is our psychic state and in our body as well so let's just show and compare this particular symbol right here, which is, some would say this is the Mercedes-Benz symbol, but, you know, they steal everything, you know, and, and this too that they stole from, this was stolen from Ethiopia. This right here is the triune symbol of Ketamawi Hala Selassie. In other words, they say of his name, this is a symbol of his name right here. But as we begin to study this, notice notice the construction. Notice it has, has it's almost like a, um, it's like fractal. It's like sacred geometry in the sense that we have the outer, is like trinity. Then there's a trinity on each level. There's a tripartiteness on each level. For example, notice this right here and the orientation. So we have one, two, three, two on top, one on bottom in that sense as well. Um, some can even look at the hands of his majesty in that sense. But just looking at the image and not studying and find out what's the meaning of what's the symbology of it, one won't come to the real understanding of it. So here's a basic chart for discipleship. Here's, here is what your discipleship will, will um, encompass uh, to giving a, a, a simple, a simple um, description, a visual description of it. It must begin with return to God. It must begin with repentance, which is an Old Testament and it's a birth hadash or a hadith kidan idea, new covenant idea. One must bridge this gap. The most dangerous place is this gap right here between receiving the truth and then building up your spiritual life. You see, most people, they receive the truth, but they don't build up their spiritual life. So when we say keep the Sabbath, or remember the Sabbath, because remember, transformation of our minds, remember the Sabbath, to keep it caduce, to keep it separate, to keep it holy. That gives us at least a time to redeem ourselves, as the word says, to redeem the time, because the days are evil. There's something I'm working on right here. Um, 
concerning his, his the gospel of his majesty. This is a book that hopefully will be published very soon, y'all willing. It says, uh, Redeeming the time, this is Ephesians 2, 5 and 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Now, we don't think that we should need to really um, prove to you that. I think the proof to you that we're living in evil days should be overt and obvious. But what do we do? It says, Zemenun, Zemenun Waju, redeem the time, keeping the Sabbath, both the weekly Sabbath as well as the annual Sabbath, is a perfect redeeming of the time, but it also has this um, effect. It has the effect that it helps us to build up the menfasawi, the menfasawi hiwet, the menfasawi hiwet manet. Then now, after that level, or progressing from that level to the third level, is the, is the preparation is is the preparation as well as 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 the ordering and the warfare for the spiritual for the spiritual service. So at this point right here we could put in Romans. Romans chapter twelve that we discussed a little bit earlier, chapter twelve where it says to us um about our reasonable what is our reasonable service. What is our reasonable service? Let's go there one more time. We're about to conclude this this lecture right here on discipleship, seeing that we're coming into this 2012 time. Everybody want to know if all these evil things and strange things are happening. Well, what do we do? We, we want to make sure that one doesn't have to wait on I and I or wait on this one or that one. One should work out their salvation, and this is how one works out their salvation. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, because this is the consecration aspect, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your what? Reasonable service. One's reasonable. So see, this is service here. So the first was the first was mamelas. The next was manets. You understand? And this right here is is the agelgalo, service. There is service. We serve. And who do we serve? We serve we serve our God. And what did Christ say? He says, uh, uh, we know what we worship for salvation of the Jews and salvation of Moab and Bessas and Immanagedi Yehuda, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. And be not conformed to this world, to this seclorum, to this seclorum, this gap, like we say, is the world. Between one's repentance, the world says, okay, if you repent, you become a Christian. You know what I mean? But but don't get all spiritual. Don't don't get all, you know, they don't want you to build up your spirit to edify yourself. Because in that edification process, you're going to have to separate from certain, certain things and certain people. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may, that ye may prove what is that good. What is that good and acceptable and perfect will, will of God. Then at the final level, the, the, the mat level, or at the, when we're home, spiritually, when we're spiritually home, then we are able to worship Mamlek. We're able to worship the living God in spirit that manifests in our Be'onet, in spirit and in truth. We're able to worship God in spirit and in truth. And this also helps to explain Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 42. And we'll probably conclude at this point right here, chapter 2, verse, verse 42, where it speaks of the first church, the first church or the first Beta Christian. And in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 42, it says, and they, well, let's lead into it. A little bit. Let's lead into this part right here. Just put into context. It says, "What Israel must do." This is the part that explains what Israel must do. Because everybody want to know, well, what do we do? What do we do? Is there anything that we do? You understand? Some may say, "Well, I'm waiting for you, Ross. 
No, but you need to be doing something, and you need to be waiting for the Holy Spirit, you know, waiting for the Holy Spirit. Because if you're waiting for the Holy Spirit and obedient to, the, to his will, and I'm waiting for the Holy Spirit, I'm redeeming the time as well, we will be together. We will be in the unity of the faith. This is not a man-made thing. You know, this is not a man-made, this is not a product of Babylon. No, this is not a product of China. It says, what Israel must do. And this is beginning at verse 37 of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. Let's bring that up um, right here as well so that you can, uh, let's go to Acts of the Apostles, chapter chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, uh, verse 37. Now, we're also utilizing the Schofield Study Bible. We have that available in a, in a download, a PDF download that you can use on your, your tablet, your computer, your smartphone, or any one of your mobile um, devices. So we're going to begin from right here, verse 32, in um, Acts of the Apostle, Hawariyat Sarah, Mi'raf Hulet, from verse Salasa uh, Sabat. And it says here, just show you right here so you can, can you see this right here? What Israel, what Israel must do. It's a little dark right there, what Israel must do. And it says, now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. It hurt their feelings, you know, it hurt their feelings. And they said to Petros, and to the rest of the Hawariat, men and brethren, what shall we do? You know, they, they were pricked in their heart. In other words, it got through to them. You know, it got through. It, they were a little upset. It, they, they got uncomfortable with them. It wasn't PC. This wasn't um, user-friently. Then Petros, he said uh, to them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, for the what? Remission of your chatiyat, of your sins. And ye shall be, and ye shall receive, ye shall Kabbalah, Kabbalah, the gift of the Memphis Kedus, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Bamaringa, from verse uh, 37, um, Yehim, Yehima be be samu gize lebacho teneka lebacho teneka lebacho teneka teneka, right? Um, Petro sinim Petro sinina lelo chinim Hawariat Peter and the other Hawariat the other apostles. When the mochoi men in a derg, men in a derg, alu acho, they ask, what shall we do? Kutera uh, salasa cement, Petro sim, and Peter, nisha, nisha gubu, nisha gubu. He said, repent, or in a sense, enter the nisha. And we've explained that in some of the other videos, so check out those videos while they're available. But the basic idea is repent, repent, or have a metanoia. Metanoia means have a change of mind. So if you look up the word from, uh, let's just do this right here so you can see this, this, this particular search. Go to the Strong's, the Strong's um, Concordance, the 3340. Let's go to 3340. We're seeking to pull up to 3340. You see what it says? Meta noeo. Met, met on oeo. Meta noeo. Meta noeo. Meta noeo. Or a met on oeo. Right? It says to think differently or afterwards. You see this right here? It says to think differently or afterwards. See, Babylon wants you to repent to them. They say think different. But think different in what way? You understand? The context of this is considering our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, to think differently. You understand? Think differently. Reconsider. Reconsider. It says morally. Feel the compunction. I haven't heard that word for in a long time. Feel the compunction. And then the last one is repent. Now notice how much different it would be if they had just put in, instead of it reading, when, when it says, then Peter said to them, repent, 
and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the mission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Your Bible doesn't say Holy Ghost, but the ghost is a disembodied spirit of a of a of a of a dead person, of a dead person. So it's not Holy Ghost, but it's Holy, it's Holy Spirit. Now we're gonna probably have the pause, pause right here.